received these cool specimens from a watcher of my channel who have has asked me to help him identify what the rock or mineral might be. They're a pretty deep forest green color. This specimen has some structure that almost looks like petrified wood, perhaps. And this piece actually has a bluish color to it. And is on right down the middle here. It's really pretty stuff. Obviously the first thing that I notice about the specimens I receive is the color. So immediately I can start putting together a hypothesis based on color, which is not the only property to consider, but it is a starting position. And I can think about the different rocks that, or minerals that are in that color or come in a range that includes the color of the specimen. So here I have an assortment of jades. And you can see that it comes in many different colors. This is a block of jade. pendant made out of jade, some earrings made from British Columbian jade. So there's one possibility just based on color. Serpentine group minerals are often green, various shades of green. Here's an example of a piece of serpentine. It has a fibrous crystalline structure. Also coming in green, serpentinite. Serpentine mineral, serpentinite metamorphosed rock made of serpentine minerals. Petrified wood also comes in a color that's very reminiscent of the material that I'm looking at. This petrified wood is chalcedony, and it is colored by chlorite, very common alteration mineral. So these are some of the possibilities going through my head, just based on the color, which again is not diagnostic. It's not diagnostic enough when doing a mineral or rock identification. A very important property of minerals is the hardness, which is measured on a scale called the Mohs scale that is relative. It is a relative scale. It goes from one to nine, nine being diamond, the hardest substance or the hardest mineral. And you can buy specialized testing kits like I have here to help you measure the relative hardness of a material or a rock. Or a mineral. This is made by Mineral Labs and I got it from Amazon. Not affiliated, but it's a great set for any geologist or gemologist who wants to be able to measure hardness. It comes with four probes. Each probe has two hardnesses that it can measure and it measures, measure, measures two through nine. So this is the kit that I'm going to use to do a scratch test on this unknown green material to try to determine what its hardness is. Because this material is fairly dense and it feels hard to me, I'm going to start with a 5 hardness. So if the 5 probe can scratch this material, that would mean that the material is either a 5 or softer. Sometimes the probe can scratch another hardness 5 material slightly and sometimes it can't. But this is a good way to, to begin to, to try to narrow it down. So I'm going to just scratch it, the probe. And what I got is actually a transfer of the probe material onto the rock. 
did not scratch it. It just streaked onto it. So it's definitely not a five. So next I'm gonna go up to a six. So I have my six probe. I'm gonna see if it will scratch the material. Once again, no scratch. We'll flip it over and go to the seven. No scratch. No. Nope. So it could be a seven. The seven probe can't scratch it, but we're gonna go up one and try eight. And the eight probe is actually biting in and creating a little damage on the surface. You can see the little scratch right here where it's actually bit into the rock or mineral. See? So I can now say definitively that the rock is, or the material is softer than an eight and harder than a seven, or seven and harder. Another way that you can test the hardness of minerals if you don't have a probe kit like I have is to use rocks of a known hardness or minerals of a known hardness and see if they can scratch or be scratched by your unknown material. So in this case, I have a slice of rough agate here and I have a quartz crystal. And both of these are hardness seven and so they may or may not, if this is a seven, if this chip of unknown green material is also a seven, then it may or may not cause some damage to the agate or be damaged by the quartz. So what you do is you just find a sharp piece of your mineral, unknown mineral, and try to scratch the agate. and it really did not penetrate or cause any damage to the agate. Next, I'll try to scratch the green with a piece of quartz. Again, I'm gonna use the sharp part of the quartz and just try to scratch the unknown material. And it did a tiny little bit of damage. So it seems it was the quartz was able to get a very little bit of the green material to scratch off. But the green material couldn't scratch the agate. So I think it's safe to say that the hardness of the green material is approximately seven. So what does the hardness test tell us about the possible identification of the, this green material? Well, there are two varieties of jade. There's the nephrite amphibole type of jade, and there's the jadeite pyroxene type of jade. The amphibole type of jade, the nephrite, is between a five and a six on the Mohs scale. Now our material is a seven, so we can rule out the, the nephrite or amphibole variety of jade based on the hardness. The jadeite variety of jade ranges from a six and a half to a seven. And so we can't rule that out yet just based on hardness. Serpentine minerals can range from about a three and a half to about a five. So we can really rule out serpentine minerals at this point because we have a much harder material. Serpentinite, again, it can be soft, about a three, up to a five. It's a rock, it's not a mineral. It's composed of an aggregate of minerals, various uh, serpentine minerals, but it's too soft. So we can rule out nephrite, Serpentinite and serpentine 
based on our hardness test. Another really important diagnostic feature of a rock or a mineral is the fracture pattern that it creates when it is broken. And this has to be taken in consideration with the hardness and the specific gravity, if you can measure that, and other characteristics of a rock or mineral when you are trying to make an identification. So in this case, what you want, you want a freshly broken piece of the rock or mineral to determine what the fracture is. In the case of this material, we're lucky enough to have some freshly broken surfaces. What we have here are these kind of half moon concentric fracture patterns on this rock. You can see it right here, again, right here. It has that broken glass appearance. If you chip off glass, you'll notice that it has this same fracture. This is called a conchoidal fracture. And this is actually a super important part of the diagnostics for this material because jade does not break in a conchoidal fracture. Quartz varieties, chalcedony, break in a conchoidal fracture like this. But jade doesn't. So just looking at the fracture pattern here, we can determine that the material is not consistent with jade. And this is another little piece of the material that chipped off during transit and you can see it has the conchoidal fracture even on this little fresh piece. So this is really useful when you're trying to determine what you have. Make sure you're, you're using all the different diagnostics that you can and not relying on just one thing like color. It has a nice waxy luster, which is consistent with chalcedony. So can chalcedony be green? Sure. If there's nickel, when the chalcedony is growing, you can get this beautiful variety called chrysoprase. There's a variety, a rare variety of, of chalcedony called metorolite that is colored by chromium inclusions. And it does look similar to this. And you can also get chalcedony colored by chlorite. And this piece of green petrified wood is an example of that. As a last check on the identity of this beautiful green material, I decided to calculate the specific gravity of this rock. And you do that by weighing your sample and then measuring the displacement of the sample in water and you calculate the density of the material. Now, without calibrated instruments, just doing it in my kitchen, there's going to be a little bit of an error factor possible. But what I got for the specific gravity of this material is a 2.59. So my unknown sample here has a specific gravity that is consistent with both chalcedony and petrified wood, chalcedony replaced wood. And the reason I say that is my value of 2.59 compared to chalcedony value of 2.61 is within the error to be expected when you're using kitchen appliances to get your specific gravity versus calibrated instruments. So that would be within the margin of error. And I would be comfortable saying that it is chalcedony. I would also be comfortable saying that it could be a petrified wood, chalcedony replaced chrome wood. Petrified wood has a specific gravity of 2.3, between 2.3 and 2.6, depending on whether the replacement is complete or not, how much organic original material is still left in the sample. So I would say yes to chalcedony, perhaps 
yes to chalcedony replaced wood just based on some of the beautiful wood-like features, the grain features that it seems to possess. We used luster, fracture, specific gravity, color, and hardness to determine that this previously unknown sample sent to me by one of my viewers is most likely a chrome variety of chalcedony, possibly chalcedony replaced petrified wood. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thank you.